Um, thank you very much, Mr. Chairman, and I want to thank our uh, witnesses for being here today. Um, one of the comments that was made um, it makes me think of a promise we heard a few years ago. If you like your health care plan, you can keep your health care plan. Uh, that nothing in this is going to have any impact on anybody else. And that's what we were told, you know, in terms of what the health care plan was going to do. Uh, Mr. Cole, um, uh, Dr. LaFazzo said that, um, that this uh, BFI ruling would have absolutely no effect on franchisees. How do you feel about that? Well, I'm not a franchisee, but uh, what's troubling for me about the BFI case is that it could have been, uh, there could have been a finding of joint employer status under the old definition of the rule. The NLRB interjected uncertainty for all of us by changing the definition of the rule unnecessarily. In my case, the perfect, the perfect example is the Dulles Airport job that we're bidding in two weeks. I, the small woman-owned business is technically qualified to execute the work on the site, but too small to bond it, too small to manage a $5 million project. So I will be the project manager. I'll be the bonding agent on the, on the job. I'll be at risk on the entire job, and I will direct her forces. I'll have to tell them where to go. Now, at, since she has a CBA, I'm not going to obviously tell her how much she pays. She's already decided how much she's going to pay those people, but I'm at risk because she has a CBA. If we finish the project early, then I'm sending her employees home. But her contract with, this, with the union might not be up. So now I'm in a joint employer situation. I'm in deep trouble. Okay. Mr. Cohen, what is your response to what Ms. LaFazzo said, Dr. LaFazzo said? Uh, thank you. Uh, I believe that uh, the fear and uncertainty across the business community, whether it be franchise situations, contract situations, uh, up and down the line, is, is real and uh, uh, something that uh, business people are justifiably concerned about. Um, there has been a lot of emphasis on what the general counsel did in the, in the Freshy case, the associate general counsel, and that everybody ought to take a deep breath and realize that the law is not going to be bad on franchise situations. I don't know what the law is going to be on franchise situations, but the Freshy case was a memorandum issued by the associate general counsel, and the general counsel is the prosecutor for the NLRB. He decided not to prosecute that case through his division of advice and finding and alleging joint employer status. That is in no way binding on the board. It is not board precedent at all. Well, thank you very much. It seems to me that if our colleagues think that this has no impact, then I don't understand why you would be so opposed to this legislation. Because if the legislation simply is there to clarify, then I don't quite understand why there's any real strong opposition to it. Ms. Fortin, uh, I want to, I know you worked for a year with the Nothing Bunk Cakes co-founders to develop a franchise model for them and to become their first franchise bakery. Now they're 150, you own six of them. Why has franchising been successful for Nothing Bunk Cakes? And if the broad Browning Ferris joint employer standard had been in place eight years ago, do you think you would have gone to all the effort to become a franchisee? Nothing Bun Cakes has been successful in part because they've partnered with business owners like myself who had expertise, knowledge in other areas. We wanted to own our own businesses. We wanted to live our American dream, but we didn't know how to bake. So we needed their brand. And that's really, I loved the product. I had it at both of my baby showers. That's why I got involved. And I lived in Las Vegas at the time, and I moved to San Diego to start the company. Uh, if, if this had been in place back then, and we were in this discussion about oversight, I don't know that I would have wanted to jump into the arena and do this. Mr. Brady, I just want to say thank you so much for the great example that your business is providing 
uh, for other businesses in terms of what you're doing in the community, in terms of what you're doing for rehabilitation. Uh, I think you're a wonderful role model, and I thank you so much for all the efforts you put into helping your community. Thank you. Thank you. The, the